Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one I want to speak about why I don't believe in setting restrictive goals with dates and time constraints. So this isn't to say that I don't believe in having goals and vision boards and have like I absolutely believe in vision boards I love my vision board I have a new one on my laptop all the time but what I don't believe in is in like these five-year plans and 10-year plans and strict timelines and I need this to be achieved by this day or the world is going to end like when we put those kind of blocks and limitations on ourselves I feel like it causes us to become obsessive and actually block ourselves from receiving what we want to receive and block us from enjoying the journey. So this is something that I was actually thinking about and lo and behold, wrote a post about um, as I was walking around last night. So as you know, or may know, I'm in Sicily at the moment and I just love Sicily. It's like this really vibrant, expressive, chaotic, mad place. But if you can get beyond the disorganization and the frustration and the that nothing runs on time and everything's on their own schedule, like you can just lean in and enjoy the journey. It is such a beautiful place to be. And honestly, it's like one of my favorite parts of Italy. And obviously where my nonna is from so it's like in my blood like this land is just oh it's just me <laughs> but last night I was heading out for dinner and I was like following some of the recommendations that the Airbnb host sent to me and I wanted to go to this particular place where there's all this street food and entertainment and that kind of stuff and they had like mentioned a specific piazza so I put that in my map and then along the way, as I do, I got distracted and sidetracked and saw these colors in a distance and then saw these trees over there. And so I was wandering way off the path and figuring like, when I'm ready, I'll get back to it. I'm just going to enjoy where I'm being led. I'm going to trust that in this moment, this is where my body wants to go. This is what's capturing my attention. So I'm going to pay attention and look at that. And so I'm wandering around and enjoying the sights and going well away from where I needed to be, but knowing that when I needed to or wanted to, I could look back at my map and get there at any given moment. And so eventually I did get to the place I was initially trying to get to and I had a beautiful dinner and it was a lovely atmosphere. But along the way, I had multiple detours and multiple stops, which were really, really beautiful. And it got me thinking about the way a lot of people approach business and goals, and they're so obsessed with the destination that they forget to enjoy the journey. And so I, I think I'll just read the post to you because, as usual, like I've expressed it pretty well. So I'm going to read the post, and then if anything else feels like it wants to be shared beyond that, I will come back. <laughs> um, but so this is what I wrote this morning. And because I was like walking around and I was thinking about this as I was walking last night, I was like, oh my God, the way I do business is exactly the way I travel. I have maps, but I don't always follow them. And I just, it's kind of like a safety net. It's there for when I need it, but I don't depend on it. And I don't keep myself so obsessed on the map that I'm not looking around me. Like I'm always looking around me to see what opportunities may present them and to, to let life move me and to follow the current of where I'm being drawn and follow the curiosity. And that's really how I've always approached business as well. So what I was saying in the post is, it may take me a little longer to get to where I had originally planned, but I always get there in the end and I have many enjoyable experiences along the way. Are the detours always great experiences? No, <laughs> but when they're not, there's always something in it for me, a message, a story, a lesson I can retell. So for example, the other day, 
I had a similar experience. I was walking home from the beach, like it was a 40 minute bus journey there. So I knew it was like about a two hour walk back, but I wanted to do the walk because I wanted to see if there was any good sea spots closer to where I am so that I don't have to take the bus. Because when I was on the bus, I saw that we'd stopped at all these other parts. And I was like, oh, there must be sea closer to me. And so I thought I'd walk back and along the way, I got drawn into one of these beach bars and I paid to take one of the beds there. Like they in, in Italy, they have these things called Lido's because you've got like the free beach that you can go to or you can go to a Lido and that's where they have beds and shade and umbrellas and all of that kind of stuff. And because most of the seas here are rocks <laughs> and, and you can't really lay on them, a lot of people go to these Lido's. And I had a, a particular vision in mind from the ones I went to last year in Sicily, but last year I was on the other side of Sicily and the beaches were very, a different layout. And so I, I entered this place expecting it to be similar to what I just had in my mind. And I got there and the bed they led me to was like way, way, way back from the water. And the view in front of me was like of this shed, like, and Obviously, the Italians don't go there for the view. They go there to be at the beach bar and to then get to the water when they want to. And I was like, no, nah, I don't like this. I'm not staying here. And so I got a refund and left. And then I was just going to, I was adamant. I was just going to walk home. And then I got sucked into another one. And it was a better setup. But still, it was, it's just that very man-made feeling. And when I go to the beach, I want to be in, immersed in the nature, not like crowded on this wooden deck. Um, but also the beach here, it's like on cliffs and rocks. So you don't really have a choice. There's not sand you can lay on. Um, but anyway, so, so that was a detour that wasn't the greatest experience. And then the walk home, uh, did not lead me past the sea. I did not find places closer to home. I ended up on some back roads and I was like, okay, so that detour didn't quite go as planned, but it gives me a story to share. So not all of them always work out re really magically, but it always gives something. There's always something to be received. And in terms of last night, it was a different experience. It was really magical. So had I been rigidly following the map, I would have gotten to dinner much earlier and missed out on all the ambience, not to mention missed out on all of the extra magic, all of the extra magic I experienced along the way. And so I feel like this is really reflective of my approach. I feel like this is really a reflective of my approach to business. So as you know, I'm the systems girl. I do systems for people. I create SOPs and processes and all of this stuff. And I'm really, really adamant that these things are really valuable. And I stand by that. And I really live by that. And I have all of these things in place for myself. But because it's just like so in my nature now, like I'm not sitting there rigidly following a process or rigidly following a plan. I'm just doing it intuitively because I know on this, every day I post content, every day I do this and it just happens naturally. But in the beginning, I did need to remind myself and I did need checklists and plans and SOPs and things like that. And this is why I share this stuff with other people so that you can have the roadmaps and have the guides to lead you to where you're going. But so, so as I was saying, I have roadmaps and I have systems and I have plans laid out and I have these strategies to follow. However, I'm not so rigid that I force myself to do things that might feel misaligned. So I trust in the whispers and I trust in the nudges and I let myself take the route that feels true for me. I find what works and I let the rest go. And it may take me a little bit longer because I test and I tweak and I try things to see what suits me. But to me, it's far more important to operate in truth to myself than to rigidly follow a map someone else has laid out for me. And this is why I don't believe in setting goals with like set dates and deadlines because I feel like then we become so obsessed 
and so rigid about what do I need to do to make this outcome happen that we put our blinkers on and we're blinded and we don't actually open ourselves to the to other opportunities of potentially getting there or potentially receiving something even greater. So this is why I also don't trust anyone who says their way is the only way or who offers cookie cutter strategies with no room for movement because there's so many ways to get to a destination. And that's why I can provide maps and systems. I can share what has and hasn't worked for me, but I also wanna leave it up to you to use your own agency to find your unique spin, to listen to yourself and to ask what feels truest for you. Because, so, And then, so you might be sitting there wondering, well, what's the point of working with you then? And it's because it still cuts the time down because you can ask questions. You can say, hey, I'm thinking X, Y, Z, or I'm thinking this. And I can say, well, and ask you the right questions to then point you in the direction that feels truest for you. So it still cuts the time down and I can share, well, I've actually tried this and this, and this was the one that worked better for me. So what if you tried this? And that's how that works. And Sometimes we just need to be surrounded by people who are already doing the thing because that gives us the inspiration to keep going. So in my experience, the best mentors aren't the ones who tell me their way is the only way. It's more of the ones who have tested and experimented and can offer me the path that has worked best for them so I can model and make it my own. And I feel like this is also what sets me apart because I've actually tried various models. I've experienced success in all of them. I've done affiliate marketing, influencing, blogging, done for you services, courses and group programs. And not to mention, I come from the corporate background. So now I'm able to culminate all of that knowledge into systems and SOPs to help you reduce the time it takes to figure it out yourself. And to encourage you to have fun and enjoy life along the way. Because this is the part I feel where goals can just become like so rigid. Some people can become so blinded by their need to reach a certain income level or follow a specific strategy or do all the right things that they lose themselves in the process. And I'm speaking about this from experience. Like I've totally been there and I know the difference in how it feels when you're trying to do things really rigid and by the book and you've got these deadlines and you've got you're putting all of this pressure on yourself to try and do something that you're not enjoying it it's coming from that place of force whereas when you allow yourself to surrender into the flow and to have these desires and have these things that you're working towards but not be so obsessed with it then you're actually allowing yourself to open to the magic that life wants to offer you. And if you think of it more instead of goals, in, in thinking of it as how do I want to feel each day? What kind of life would really light me up? What are the things that I really enjoy doing? How do I want my days to look like creating your perfect day? All of that kind of stuff. If you allow yourself to do that, you'll probably find that when you're operating from that space of making your desires more about how you want to feel and what you want to be experiencing in life, and but that's why vision boards are great because you can create this vision board and set it as your desktop screensaver and then you look at that and you'll be a few months down the line and you'll be like, hey, wait a second, all that stuff has happened. Like, that's what I believe in. I believe in that kind of magic and that kind of visualizing and goal setting and vi vision setting and dream setting and manifesting in that way with the tangible action that allows you to get there. Because what if it, because I don't want you to lose yourself in the process. I want you to find yourself and to be yourself and to operate from that space of truth and integrity in who you are. And that's why I say, what if it's not actually about the destination at all? So you might think this is what you want 
you might think that's what you want to become and who you want to be, but is that really yours or is that what the market is saying? And you just think that's what you need to do because that's what everyone else is doing. Whereas when you tune into you and you say, this is what I want to feel. This is who I want to be. This is how I want to operate in the world. And you come from that place of these are my values and this is what I want to achieve. And this is how I want to feel then you're operate. It's a very subtle difference, but it is a difference. And then when you wake up every day and you're like, okay, I'm feeling this, then you start to keep feeling that because you're like, oh, it's working. And you, you start to make those differences. So what if by being so obsessed with that destination, like 10K months or 50K months, without actually having any meaning or feeling attached to it, that's why you're missing out on it because you're not actually feeling what it would be like to have it. So rather than thinking, okay, I want 10K months because that's what everyone says, why do you want 10K months? What will 10K months get you? What is it that you desire? So for me, the lifestyle I desire is being able to move around the world, travel, live in places that inspire me, like set myself up with a base for one to two months where I get to really immerse myself in the culture and the lifestyle of the place I'm exploring. And I get to work and live there. And as long as I'm doing that, and I'm meeting people along the way, and I'm exploring new lands, and I'm having rich and vibrant experiences, and then I'm inspired to speak and show up and share my message and reach more people and impact more people. It all ripples. It's all touching each other and Im impacting because everything's connected. Then I know like it doesn't matter what balance is in my bank account. As long as I'm doing this, I feel successful. I feel abundant. I feel like my life is the best life in the world because I'm doing what I love. And I'm surrounded by people I love. I'm having really rich, deep conversations. I'm connecting. I'm having experiences and like really, really savoring life. To me, that's what's important. So that's, and it's all about enjoying the journey every single day. What does today have to offer me? And how can I just soak every bit of it up? That's the way I, that's the reference I use. And so what if the systems and the maps and the goals are a guide to help you to choose the parts that work for you? The systems are there to help us to be a reference point. The goals are there to be a reference point. It's something to turn to when we start to feel ourselves getting a little bit lost and straying from the path and maybe having one of those ego and identity crises. And then we come back and we look at, oh, that's right. This is how I want to be feeling. This is what I want to be achieving. Oh, actually, I'm really, I'm already doing that. Oh, yay me. And then you get back on track because you're not allowing yourself to get all like flustered and all over the place because you have this anchor and you have this grounding point. So that's why they go hand in hand. You do need systems and you do need structures and processes and goals, but not to be so rigid and obsessed and attached to how it looks that you're missing out on the journey and blind to what's available to you along the way. So we trust our hearts and we trust our intuition to lead us too. And what if the more you allow yourself to lean in and surrender to life, the more fun you have, the more you actually start to achieve your goals with ease because you're not obsessing with them. But they're just happening because you're in that current and you're in that flow and you're moving with life and the obsession falls away. So you become more of an energetic match for what you're calling in. So what if you just allowed yourself to enjoy the journey a little bit more? How would that look? And how would you approach your goals then? It, because the wording of how you do it and the way you set it up would change then. And that's what I invite you to take a look at. Enjoy and thank you for watching.